This is the blueprint. Like if you follow this blueprint, guaranteed, guaranteed you will get good. Do I have advice for some singing? Uh, Samantha, what's the question on singing though? So what, what is your question on singing in particular? Because I got plenty of advice about singing. Heaps. So much. I could, I could talk your ear off for the next hour about singing. Because singing is awesome. Don't be afraid to be like super like... Like, what should you practice to get better? Anything. I, I, I kid you not. Like, it's, it says, the, so the thing is, Samantha, unless I know what you sound like, I can't really help you. Like, I can't help you directly. Because basically the question that you're asking me is, how do I get into shape? Well, you eat good and you, go, you exercise. Just eat better and exercise more. That's it. Now, how do you get good at singing? Sing heaps of songs. And then do it for years. And you'll be good at singing. That, that, this is literally it. Like there's, there's no, no, like the general thing is just sing songs. And I, and I hate to be like super like basic about it, but that is truly the hack. Yeah. Well, so Luke's one is even like, so Luke is doing, I'm going to be making a video on like how to go pro because I've been trying to, I've been trying to like figure out how to explain music in a really, really healthy way. And I find that like, um, I think there's a mentality thing. One, one second, because I'm just going to actually just riff on this uh, with you guys briefly. But this is something that now you don't hear the God voice. So this is something that I think about a lot. And I was like, what's the difference between going like going pro and then and then just being someone who just doesn't get better? You know, and cuz I was like I was trying to fray, like figure out like what's the difference between an intermediate guitarist and an advanced guitarist? And this is where I came into like the the mindset of like what's an intermediate musician and what's an advanced musician? Well, that was reverberating with you. Yeah, so that's where I was thinking. I was fucking <laughs> Dylan. Your dad jokes. I love it. Um, it was actually a delay as well, but it's, I didn't. I understand if you didn't hear that one too, but it's an effect. Anyway, so uh, basically, I was trying to figure out what's the difference between intermediate and advanced, and then I was like. And then I had people coming into the community, especially our accelerator, which was really recent. Like I was watching one student who was like, he's like, I'm not getting what I wanted out of this. And I'm like, well, well yeah, like, let's figure it out. Like, what is it? And it's like, no, I'm not getting it. And I'm like, oh, this is the thing that I get. Like I, I, I was warned about this of like, some people will just not want to do it because the reality is way scarier than the fiction of like, I can't do it. So the, so the reality of like, oh, now I know what good looks like. I actually don't want to do it. And in their brain, they're like, all these red flags come up and they're like, I don't want to do it because I don't want to go through that level of pain. So I will just accept that I'm not that good and this thing does not work for me. So, some people will be like, what is the secret to sing? It's just sing, you know? And for them, they're like, well, that's terrifying. Because like, who wants to hear their voice sound like shit? Who wants to be singing and have their family members be like, oh, that's yuck. Why are you doing that? Have their friends put them down and be like, why are you trying to learn how to sing? Especially if you're like older, right? Like imagine you're older and you want to get into singing and you're like, oh, I want to go and start singing and I want to start performing and I start getting better. And then people are like, they they walk in and they're like straight up judged. They might be sitting on a dream. Like you don't need to be fucking Ed Sheeran or Taylor Swift or anything like that. But you could have a dream of like, I want to get, I want to sing this song. Or I want to, I want to know what it feels like to sing. I want to know what it feels like to be on a microphone and sing a song and try. And they just don't do it. 
because they have all of these things that they think other people are going to think on them. Or people might even say it to them. People might be like, wow, that sounds like shit. That's garbage, blah, blah, blah. And they just don't move forward and they just live these lives where they just like, that won't work for me. That won't work for me. That won't for me. You could tell them every single thing that is the right step to do. I could hold your fucking hand every day and you won't do it, which is crazy. Cause, and I, and I saw it. Like I, I, I have seen it with my students that I've had one-on-one. They'll be like, I want to do, I want to do, I want to do. And I'm like, sweet. I know it from me. I'm like, I want to do, I want to do, I want to do. And I had professors that were going to help me every step of the way. And I just didn't do it. I just didn't want to do the work. I did not get summa cum laude. So summa cum laude was the, the highest honor that you can get from graduating at an American college, which means I had perfect grades. I finished my GPA at, at 3.84 at Berkeley, which is 0.1, uh, 0.01 of summa cum laude. And, and what happened was, my professor said, I will give you an A if you just submit one song. And I was so defeated at that point of like, I'm never going to be anything at music. There was two, two instances where I was going to quit music. Actually, three. I have three moments in my life where I was going to quit music. First one, but I'll just finish the story of this one. Uh, like I said, no. I said, w- will I fail this course if I don't submit a song? And she's like, no, I'll just give you a C. And so that C, fucking kid you not, that C was the difference. It was my second last semester at Berkeley. That C that I just didn't want to write a song. I didn't want to put in like 30 minutes. I was like, I'm just, I'm nothing. I'm shit. I don't give a crap. And I didn't do it. And I got the C and I lost forever. I will be magna cum laude, not summa cum laude, you know, which was super shit in hindsight. And I was like, oh my God, how, how weak my mind was back in the day. But on a super serious note, like I had three moments in music where I was like, this is not going to work. I'm, I'm done. I'm quitting music. First one was when I realized that I could never be the best guitarist in the world. And I was like practicing every single day and I couldn't get it. And I was like, this is not going to work. And then at that point, that's when I discovered John Mayer. John Mayer was like, I want to be listenable. And I was like, dude, that's what I need to do. And so I just copied everything John Mayer did, followed his blueprint. And that's why I went to Berkeley. The second time I wanted to quit music was when I was uh, graduated Berkeley. And then I went to Nashville. And then I realized I am nothing like any of these people who are winning. And I will never be successful. And I will never be able to have a career in music. And this is shit. And I was like, cool. I'm done. And I just straight up was, I wanted to leave Nashville the first month I was there. I, I moved to Nashville and I was like, I'm done. There's no way. I wanted to break my lease and come home. My mom and dad were like, you need to stick it out. Just give it a year. Like, we're fine. Nothing can ever happen with your shit. You don't even have to earn money. Just stay. Because it's like a once in a lifetime thing. Do it. And I'm grateful that they did because I ended up getting an internship and I got to work at a record label and stuff like that. And I got to go to CMA Fest and have all these amazing memories and go and watch these great musicians and hang out with my friends who are absolutely killing and becoming like record artists. So I got to see everything. got to be the fly on the wall and see everything firsthand. But I straight up was like, I'm done with music. And I thought I could be in the music industry. And then I went and worked at a record label and I was like, there's no fucking way I can be in the music industry. This sucks. Like it was so shit for me. Personally, I was like, this sucks. I went in, did the job. My, The person that hired me, they quit within like three or four weeks of me working there. I ended up taking her job. Um, they were like, we're going to find someone to replace her within like a week or two. They saw that I could do her job and the intern job that I needed to get done. So I was doing digital marketing and distribution. So I was basically working for the head of distribution and the head of the marketing. And I was just working under them and helping them all with the digital stuff, fixing all of their spreadsheets, doing all that shit. And I was so bored. And I was like, this is the easiest thing in the world. I can't believe this is how the music industry works. And I was watching them like throw money away from that artist. Like artists would sign up and we'd, they'd get the budgets and they'd just throw it all away. And I was like, if this is what the industry is, I just hate it. I'm done. So then, and they were like, yeah, man, you should, we'll, we'll keep you in. We'll get you a job. You can sign up here. Like we'll bring you in. You can do this stuff. And next month we're going to be working on Lupe Fiasco. We're going to take you to Bonnaroo to all this stuff. And I was like, dude. There's no, do you know how much they wanted to pay me per year? Are you ready for this? Like Luke and Dylan will fucking love this. Are you guys, do you want to know how much I got offered to pay when I did, 
I went from being an intern to doing all of the distribution work, all of the digital marketing work, like grunt work, like smashing it all out and then helping optimize their things, helping them do everything, do like create assets, like digital assets, like the, I did the marketing video. I had very little experience, but I did the marketing video for John Oates. So from Hall and Oates, he was releasing an album. I did his little advertising stuff. Luke's is on 60K. Anyone else want to put it in a, a guess on how much I, I got offered per year? So the, the perks were, this was, it was the salary. And then on top of that, I got to go to all the festivals. I got to meet all the artists. I got to do all that stuff too. So there was some, some big perks for someone who's trying to get in on the industry. 28K US a year was the offer. Good times, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, so that was the other time I wanted to quit music. What's that in AUD? That'd be like right now, probably around like 35K. 35K Australian. Yeah, Riley was pretty close. <laughs> yeah. 42K? Yeah, there you go. Boom. Luke's got to figure it figured out. No, nah, there's no way. Oh, yeah, 42. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah, so it's pretty brutal. So that was the second time I wanted to quit music. Uh, I moved back to Australia and I was like, cool, I'm going to work for my wife. She had a frozen food company. So I worked at, I worked with them. Um, that was like my first like real, like just job, like grunt work, just like grinding out and just like wrapping these frozen food parcels and stuff and lasagnas and all that stuff that they were doing. And then I just was like, well, I have a huge, I have a degree in music. So I might as well just go get a, you know, start getting less, like start teaching people. So I joined a local music school and I was a guitar teacher for them for like a semester and then, and then they decided to change their payment terms. And I was like, well, I could just like go do this on my own. It's not really that hard. And that was the first time that I stepped out of my bubble and I started my own business, which was teaching. So then I started teaching on my own. And then I went from being like, I'm never going to be in the music to doing that. Then I played at like some, some bar. Like I literally looked at it the other day on like my goals or whatever that I had. And I, my goal was to play one gig a month. I was like, man, that would be the coolest shit in the world, Luan. Imagine you could play one gig a month um, from going like, I'm so dumb with music. I'm super shit. This is never going to happen. Um, and like, you got to understand, like for me, mentally, I was like so defeated. And every day I would watch all my friends killing it. I would watch and I loved that they were winning because I would watch, I watch them. I'd watch like the my roommate. He's like just smashing it out he's writing songs with chain smokers and then he's like building up his brand he's got millions of followers and then my other friend who's writing hit songs with people another friend who just got signed who was about to go on his headline tour and i got another friend who was an independent artist and who was doing his own tour and he was releasing his song and starting to get gold record like just i, I was it was in my face all the time watching and seeing like wow i just definitely don't have it and then all i did was i started teaching and then i started playing at shitty dive bars I literally started, so for any of you guys are wondering like how to get into gigs and stuff like that, I started by playing with a blues guitarist, love him to death, great guy, um, but he loved drinking. And so every rehearsal was me driving him to the bottle low so he could get a bunch of beer and then he would get drunk during rehearsal and we would practice through the songs that he need, we needed, I needed to know. Um, and then at the shows, he would get tanked at the show so we couldn't really sing that much uh and then all we would do is he'd be like hey like you've got a pretty decent voice do you want to sing some songs in between so i can rest my voice and this all good and so that's where i started singing you want to know how i started singing and playing guitar um like i had started learning how to sing beforehand yes but i'd never gigged i had never sung and played guitar the f the only time i sang and played gu guitar was at the end of my first degree, we had like a little showcase of the songs that we had written and I performed three songs. And that was the only time I ever sang in public live. And I was terrified, but it was like, it was my crew and we loved it and everyone was super supportive. So I was like, thank God, um, we made it through. And so I only learned how to sing to allow myself to learn how to write songs. That's how, why, like the main reason I learned how to sing. And then I just played with this dude and then I started singing a couple of songs 
And then it became like 10 songs in the whole night. And then it became like half the songs. And then like sometimes he just like would let me do a whole set. And I got paid like $50 a show. Sometimes $50, $100 a show, whatever. So it was like nothing. And then a guy reached out to me who wanted to do drums. And he was like, oh, dude, let's make a duo. I'll play drums. I'll help us get the gigs and stuff. And I was like, okay, well, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to want to build my own brand off of this. Cause like, I don't want to like put in all this work and whatever. So anyway, I started my, my business called sneaky beats. And then that's where I started doing gigs. And then very quickly I got to one a month and then I got a, another, um, a residency. And then I just started playing heaps and heaps more. And then people started liking it. And then all I did was just people tell me to do something. I'll learn it. So I went from being like someone who'd never done any gigs, sucked at performing, sucked at doing all that stuff to we got better and we got closer and closer. And then I went from being someone who like completely quit and gave up on music. And I was like, wow, I fucking suck. I just need to make money so that like I can, the only reason I started playing music, I, I kid you not, only reason I started playing music again, like pushing it and trying to do the teaching and do all this stuff. The only reason I did that was so I could buy an engagement ring so I could get married. That's it. Only fucking reason. And the first bit of savings I had, that was what I did. Bought the engagement ring. And then the second bit of savings I had, I bought a gaming computer. <laughs> I didn't even buy a gaming computer. I just, uh, I just, uh, I did one of those zip pay things. Cause I was like, well, you know, the only thing I ever want to do in my life is just to enjoy life. So if I'm never going to be a good musician, I might as well just enjoy my, enjoy my life and just use whatever skills I have to make a living. And so I was like, I calculated for me. I was like, I only need like 250, $300 a week. I don't know. I don't know why we got so deep on this, but <laughs> the only reason I say this, I'm just like trying to tie it back, um, was because I didn't think I could be pro because I saw what pro was. And then I just fucking gave up because I just believed that I could never do it. I could never have that. I could never, I saw exactly what it took. And I was like, well, I can't make, I can't do that. I'm not someone who can handle that. You know, I was like, oh, I can't be someone who practices like four or five hours a day. I can be someone who like goes and does all those things. And then what I did was once I, the second time of like being like completely defeated with music and then I kind of started like just organically playing more and more. I started doing weekends like a year or two later where I played more music in one weekend than I did the entire time I played at Berkeley. Because I did 12 hour days of me singing and playing. Like I would start at 5 p.m. on a Friday and then I would finish at 3 a.m. on a Saturday and then I would wake up and then I would show up to the next gig at 11 a.m on a Saturday on a, on a Saturday and then I'd play from Saturday till Sunday morning at 3 a.m. and then I would wake up and on Sunday I would do another show at around like 11 or 12 and I'd play till like 5 p.m. So that's what I did. And then that's how I was like, "Oh. Actually, in my mind I was like I can't be the guy who can't do I can't do all these things. I can't be better. I can't do all those things." But I was the guy who was showing up and playing 20 hours of music in one weekend. And I was like, oh, well, the evidence says that I can, so maybe I can. And then I heard a guy called Jerry Garcia say it, and then I heard another guy called Chris Willex. I don't know if you guys have heard of him. Um, he runs this thing called the Modern Wisdom Podcast. But he has, So the one thing that I heard Jerry Garcia say was like, the only thing you want to do as a musician is be better every single time you play, whether it's a show, practice, anything. Anytime you pick up an instrument, the job of you as a musician is, can I get better? And as soon as I put that frame on every instance I had a guitar or music or anything in my hand, I was like, I'm getting better right now. And so I was like, can I hit this note a bit better? Can I play this a little bit better? Can I do all those things a little bit better? And so that's what really, really changed shit for me. And then Chris Will said, um, cause he was in podcasting space. He was like, what does it take to go pro? And I was like, fuck, what does it take to go pro in music? And I was like, ah, oh. so I built up this framework for myself and I was like, well, it's going to take me to practice a lot. 
I need some form of feedback mechanism, like something that's going to deliver me feedback, and I need accountability. So I need to be able to practice. But in order to practice, I need to have something that allows me to get better. Like I need to have a way to filter what I'm doing to get better. And then I need to be able to be accountable to that feedback and accountable to the practice. So that's why I'm doing this. So I started live streaming just to do that. Because I found I got better when I gigged and then I was like, well, what if I gig every single day? Oh my God, crazy, right? And so just to like bring this back home, like when you're going into singing, I don't know if Samantha's still here because if she's been listening to me, you just rant on this. But when you say, how do I get good at singing? It's like, do you want to get good at singing? That's the real question. So giving you the whole backstory of my shit, it's like, do you want to get good at singing? So for me, I was like, I always thought of myself as a guitarist who sang. Guitarist who would just facilitate the songs. And then I actually was like, no, I need to be a singer. I need to be a vehicle that can perform music. So then I would completely flip my mindset and I was like, well, the only thing that matters in every single performance is that my vocal is awesome. And that's all I ever did. I just sang a lot of songs. I played a lot of gigs. And every time I got into the, the room to practice or I got onto the stage, every time was like, or in the stream, I was like, I need to get better at my vocal. And the only thing that will hold you back, so I have like this three-step framework. It's like, You've got the practice, which is either you practicing at home or performing or whatever it is. And in those moments, you need to get better. You be like, am I getting better in this moment? Am I singing this lyric better? Am I playing these chords better? Am I playing this note better? Could I do this cleaner? Am I out of time? Like you're asking these questions all the time and you're always pushing yourself every little increment to get better. And if you think like that, you will destroy everyone. Not to say that you've got to beat competition, but like, Say you're a professional, you need to be competitive because other people will take your gigs. And so you want to make sure, like, so for instance, me, I need to make sure I'm really, really good because I got other people that who depend on me executing as a musician. I got my family and I got my band members' families. So I got to make sure that I do really, really well. So I got to keep getting really, really good because if I miss bookings because I'm not good, that's not good for everyone else. So that's how I saw it. And that's why I started practicing more. And so all I did was like I turned the practice into getting better every single time. Now I needed a feedback mechanism to know I was getting better. So I was like, okay, well, I will record everything that I do. And then I will assess what I do because I can go back to all these streams. You can go back and you can see all my progress. And every time when he couldn't sing, like when could Lauren sing falsetto, you can see it. I didn't know how to sing falsetto. I didn't try those songs. I, I would sing dive and it would be garbage. I would sing Tennessee whiskey and it would be garbage. I would sing all these songs that were not very good. My looping wasn't very good. All those different things. And I would improve upon them every single time. And so I used the stream and then the community as my feedback mechanism to be like, oh, okay, cool. They're responding to this. Do more of that. I tried really hard here and someone commented on my voice. When someone says, oh, man, you're a great guitarist, Lauren. I'm like, fuck, I messed up. That means I didn't do well on the vocal and that's why they're not connecting with the song they just like oh wow their guitar playing looks good so they connect to the thing that is good and so if my vocal is not better than my guitar playing then i have failed in my mindset because my goal was to improve my vocal now the third one is accountability so if you can set up overdone on the feedback no i love it i mean for me i love it um but for everyone else you'll, you'll find that and then the third one was accountability was like how can i do this all the time like you want to be able to practice and then you want to be able to get a feedback so that when you come back to the practice, you're always improving and then you need to be accountable so that you can practice and have the feedback loop and have that happening all the time. And if you do that, you will get really, really good at singing. So that's essentially all I did with my coaching program was like create that. So I just created that for myself and then I created that for everyone else if they wanted it. But that's essentially what it is. That's the trick. If you're like, What's the hack to getting good at singing? Or what's the hack to get, a good, at, get good at guitar or songwriting or production or everything? It's just that. And then the second you accept that, you go pro. 
Like it doesn't matter if you're going to be doing it as a hobby in your bedroom or you're going to be doing it on big ass stages or whatever, or you want to become the best musician in the world. That is literally the recipe for going pro. Every musician, every pro musician, every single person that I have met who is exceptional, that is the only thing that they ever had. They went in and they practiced. They had a feedback loop that allowed them to get better at that practice. They had an accountability platform, which is either a record label telling you what to do or, a, or they had to show up to shows or they had to go and like do tours or they had to do things like or rehearse for tours. Things. They had some form of accountability and it kept feeding back into the guitar, feed, feeding back. Oh, I just said guitar, male guitar. Thanks for following. Just kept feeding back into that loop of practice. So the practice, feedback, accountability back so they could keep practicing. And the ones that had it down, they got better fastest. And that's why you have probably seen that I've gotten way better in the past, you know, six months. Like completely like leveled up my singing, my playing, my arrangement, my entertainment value. Like every single area that I've been working on has improved just because I've done that. So that's that's what I would recommend. So like someone like Riley, who's brand new, like that's I didn't I wasn't lying when I said, bro. The singing is not good, but the effort, that's the hard thing. The singing gets good no matter what, but you being able to be like, Hey, I'm going to practice and I'm going to take the feedback that I get, whether it's good or bad. And then I'm going to be accountable to my practice. So then I can practice again. And then I go through the whole cycle over and over and over and over and over again. And then you get really good. If it takes you one year, great. If it takes you 10 years, great. Takes you 20 years. Like say, for instance, someone could tell you like, hey, if you practice every single day in 20 years, you could be one of the best musicians you could ever be in your entire life and be one of the top 1% in the world. Would you do it? That's a question, right? Like some people are like, oh, no, I don't want to do that. They like, they just want, oh, well, if I try a little bit now, I'll get it all in a year. It's like, no, it doesn't work like that. But you aren't like so many people I hear, I heard this thing every time. It's like they overestimate what they can do in a year, but underestimate what they can do in 10. It's like you literally practice every single day for 10 years on singing and playing guitar and songwriting and doing, you will be good guaranteed. And every single area of music requires it. There's no like, or oh, I'm going to go sing and play guitar and then I'm going to go to songwriting. And in a year I'm going to be like a great songwriter. It's like, no, it doesn't work like that you got to put in five to 10 years on songwriting to be a good songwriter. But I mean, you can compress it down by how much, how good your iteration of practices and stuff. And then when it comes to the practice itself, like practice has its own bandwidth, right? So like at the beginning, you're only going to be good for 15 minutes and then you're going to be good at 30 minutes of practice. Then you're going to be good at one hour of practice. And then after six months of you practicing, you might be really effective at doing like two, three hours of practice and improving each day. Like for me, I think my limit currently sits at like two to three hours a day. I can be super effective. Like, you know, like fire type Pokemon against grass Pokemon, that level of super, super effective. I can be like that. Charmander v Bulbasaur, that's how good I can be in practice. And then after that, I'm pretty useless. I like get distracted and I can't do it. So like for me, I think I'm sitting at like two to three hours. But like that is that I'm working on that. Like I'm trying to build my work ethic up. I'm not the perfect at it, but I've had a couple of mornings recently where I've woken up at like 4, 4.30 in the morning. Matt Underwood. Okay, and see Matt, are you ready? Matt fucking knows. See, Matt knows exactly what I'm fucking talking about because we got to watch Tony do it. And you want to know what's even crazy? Matt, how much does Tony practice right now? I'm super curious. How much does Tony practice right now on top of all of his gigs? So right now, Matt and Tony are currently touring around the world, playing shows. If you wanted to, let's see if you can give us a little bit of insight, Matt, on like what what a typical day for Tony looks like between his technique practice, his practice on the piano, his song arrangement practice, and then he does his shows. And then he does all of his content creation stuff the guy's putting in like, he did like 15 hours a day of like 12, like at least 10 to 15 hours a day of hard work to get to where he is. And even where he is right now, he's doing probably like 
eight to 10 hours a day. Easy. Easy. I would expect Tony to be doing like eight to 10 hours a day of work. Like does not fuck around at all. Yeah, obviously. Exactly. Seven days a week. So any of you musicians are wondering like, what does it take to get good? You can't touch Tony. Like say if you were like, oh, I want to be, I want to be like Tony Ann in music. There you go. Of just practice. Just practice. Three hours a day on the piano. Minimum. Like Matt knows, we used to get in trouble. We used to get sound noise complaints at our apartment because Tony was smashing the fucking pedal. Tony was practicing that much. We used to get noise complaints from people downstairs because all they could hear was a thumping. And it was Tony like hitting his, you know, expression pedal on his piano, on his keyboard. Happened all the time. And he would practice in the in our in our apartment and he would practice in the in the uh in the berkeley rooms every time and if you guys are wondering like what does it take like some people would be like how do you get good and they're like oh well i could get pretty good at music for bro matt i'm so good uh you loving the channel oh dude uh, matt i actually was gonna ask you maybe you speak to tony and see see how it is but um i'm going to be starting some like uh like masterclass sessions. I'm going to reach out to a bunch of my friends that like know heaps of shit that like people in our music school can, cause we got like a, a free music school going, going on. But if like Tony maybe in the future wants to jump in, cause we've got a bunch of piano players, it'd be super cool to like get them to ask questions. And then Tony could do like a, like a 30 minute or an hour masterclass answering questions on piano and like giving people like real facts on like, what does it take to work really right? really hard show you the money yeah man it's free so <laughs> that's the only problem one day when it's when it's big then it'll be worth worth the time but um yeah so it's like oh <gasps> you kidding me dude australia early 2025 yes buddy and you guys want to know as well so matt does like matt's pretty much like the manager of tony right so we we're all roommates me matt and tony matt and Tony were just like writing heaps of songs, grinding it out, trying to figure it out. They were literally throwing shit on the wall for like so long, so, so long. They started a band, they were doing co-writing. They like, and Matt on top of that was doing all the business stuff. Like Matt was learning all of the, the legal shit. Matt was like meeting managers, touring managers, learning everything he could, like soaking up as much as he could. And then they two paired up now. They went from like being in a band together and co-writing together, doing all that stuff together. And then now they're touring together. And like Matt put in like, you know, five to 10 hours, like easily, anytime I looked at Matt. So like the amount of time I would spend playing World of Warcraft, Matt would be spending learning <laughs> about the business of music, learning how to get onto playlists, learning how to get like uh, different, like, uh, like record labels to get interest, learning how to pitch to different people. Like, he just did all this crazy, crazy hard work at Berkeley. And then even after we left Berkeley, they were living in LA, they were grinding it. Like, that's what it takes. And so like everyone looks at it and they're just like, oh yeah, man, I could just practice and I could do it. It's like, no, you got to practice and then you got to go do double what these guys did if you want to catch up. Exactly like what Matt says. Best way to learn is just do it. So that's where it comes down to. Like you want to get good at music, you want to do anything, just go pro and just do it. And you just try. And every single day you just keep iterating and then you're just going to build up skills in the start. It's really, really slow. And then it compounds and then you just get crazy good. Really, really like it starts getting faster and faster and faster at that point. And then you get rewarded for doing really, really hard work. And then you're like, man, five hours just went by. This was sick. And that's the cool thing. When you hit that point where you're like, wow, three hours feels like 10 minutes at the beginning, 10 minutes of practice feels like so painful. And then an hour of practice is like, oh man, that just disappeared. Uh, and then fucking five hours feels like nothing. I haven't hit the five hours mark, but for I know for some musicians, like five hours will go by like that. And they they even say like, it's crazy. We do days that are like eight hours, 10 hours. I forgot to eat food. 
and you're like, yep. Like, Matt, do you remember when Beyonce's touring band came through? Were you at that masterclass when they did it? Because that was a fucking fire one. And hearing them talk about that. Exactly. You guys seeing what Matt's saying there? Takes five to ten years. Yep. Exactly that. Because if you... Ma I mean, I I remember... So, Tony started... He, he built up... It took like a year or two at Berkeley where he built up his arrangements and stuff. Then he got to go on tour with the Chainsmokers. That's another year. So, that's three years. And then he kept building the brand. Yeah. Exactly. First semester, dude. The fucking dreams, man. <laughs> Yeah, but Matt got to meet John Mayer, so I'm fucking mad at Matt. I'll never I'll never forget this. You did meet John Mayer, right? I'm pretty sure you did. I'm pretty sure you got to I'm pretty sure Matt got to meet John Mayer. Oh, you didn't. Oh, okay. I thought you were there at the masterclass that he did after I left. Or did you just cuz I remember so vaguely you sent me a message that he was coming to do a lyric writing class at Berkeley, but I had just moved to Nashville. Oh, uh, you didn't get to... Oh, wait, so you were at the class, so you got to learn from him, right? But you didn't get to be give him a clap. High five. <laughs> Okay, yeah, cool. He did a masterclass, cool. Yeah, so I I hated Matt when he sent me that message. He's like, bro, I got to got to learn from John Mayer. <laughs> and I'm sitting there in Nashville, and I'm like, fuck my life, man. <laughs> oh, wow, dude. I wonder if they've got it on YouTube. I need to go check it out, see if they have it. <laughs> Samantha, thank you so much. I don't mean to have gone completely sidetracked, but hopefully that helps you out, Samantha. I know I'm obviously answering. That was such a long way to answer, like how to get good at at um singing, but like that that is it really is the truth. Like it's what it takes. You just got to work super fucking hard, and then it all works out in the end. Yeah. I'll clip it and we'll share it with other people, see if it helps them out. But if it did help, I'm glad. Um but yeah. It uh I'm going to turn it into an actual video. Like I, I need to actually make a video of like what it takes to go pro so you guys can actually learn. Um learn how to build the frameworks to be like, this is the frame, this is the blueprint. Like if you follow this blueprint guaranteed guaranteed you will get good there is no there's no way it's like a it's a foolproof plan like you go in you practice you create a feedback loop and then you are accountable to that practice you will 110 percent just get good like you and it doesn't i don't know what time horizon it works for everyone but some people will take a year or two because they already have like you know their parents are musicians or they've been growing up. They might've been passively playing and learning a bunch of things. For me, the second I started thinking that way, I got better so much faster, but I had Berkeley. I had all my friends, all the, that I learned from and all those things. I was able to synthesize that material way faster. Um, so it's been able to accelerate my learning way quicker. You look at someone like Dylan, he's been absolutely crushing it and it's only taken like a year. I've only known him for a year and he's absolutely completely leveled up all of his playing and you give him five more years, he will have an album, he will be able to write songs really well, he'll be able to play and improvise, he'll be able to arrange music and he'll be able to record demos. In five years, he'll be able to do that, no problem. So for the rest of his life, he can write music, play music confidently and record music. Like, what, what a trade, you know? Five years and then for the rest of your life, you can do that. And then for the rest of his life, he can teach his son how to do it. 
and he can jam with his son and maybe his son gets into music and then they can co-write together and do all that. like you don't need to be a professional musician but going pro is about you taking it seriously and understanding how to do that 